Hi guys, Goodgolf here with the next episode on Fishnet networking in combination with the Steam Lobby. This time we'll make a few small tweaks to the lobby setup and then start a game scene using the Start Game button I showed in the previous video. Before we start we need to do a quick check to make sure Fishnet will work correctly using the Steam networking features. Go to the networking manager and make sure the peer-to-peer -peer option is checked on the Fishy Steamworks component. While we are there, we can also disable the Play or Spawner script, since we'll not be needing it. Instead, I wrote some code to dynamically find the spawning positions once the game scene is loaded. Another item to check quickly. The lobby manager needs to persist into the game scene, otherwise some of its events will not be called when the game scene is loaded. So, I added my Do Not Destroy script to it too. Ok, so now that all has been done, let me walk you through the change I made to the lobby. When the player hosting the lobby presses the Start Game button, I want to load a game scene. Instead of hard coding a scene name into the method, I want to read the scene name from the lobby metadata. This will allow us to build some map or scene selection UI in the lobby screen. I will only show you how to use the lobby metadata, since creating a drop-down box in the UI is a common task I expect you will be able to do in your own project. For this to work we need to have our own lobby creation method, so I changed the onClick event for the create lobby button to point to a new method instead of the existing lobby manager's components create method. Let's take a quick look at the code for the new method. First, we retrieve the lobby hosting player's Steam name to create a more personalized and dynamic lobby name. Next, we set the lobby type to public. Again, this is something you can make dependent on a switch on the lobby UI. Last, we create a metadata field to be added to the lobby manager lobby create arguments. Step 1 is to create a metadata template. It uses a key value pair, where the key will be named scene, and the value will contain the name of the game scene to be loaded when the game starts. In this case it's test scene 1. This is where you can dynamically change the scene name from a drop-down list or another UI element. Now we can start creating the game scene. I used Triple Bricks Sci-Fi Facility and Maxim Bugrimov's Sci-Fi Characters for the initial setup. For the character controller I'm using the paid version of Invector. So first we need to set up the test scene. I'm using an example scene and added two small spheres which will act as the spawning points. Remove the collider and add the tag spawn. The code I will show in a minute will check the scene once it's loaded and collect all transforms of objects tagged as spawn for potential starting positions. Next you will need to create a character controller based on a character model. Simply follow the instructions from the Invector kit and you will have a character up and running within a couple of minutes. Once you have the character in the scene, you need to add a few components. The Fishnet Networking Transform and Networking Animator scripts. This will automatically add the Network Object script. Add my player script. This script will disable all of the Invector scripts in the Awake method and will only enable these again for the locally owned instance of it. Note that there were some issues with the code and the free Invector kit where I needed to enable the inputs after some delay. For the Infector Pro kit this is not an issue, it's not needed. Make sure you create a prefab of this character and delete it from the test scene. Now let's look at the updated Steam Lobby code. The start method has been modified a bit. It now caches the Fishnet Network Manager component which has been initialized in the bootstrap scene. Also it finds the host game script which does the heavy lifting for the starting of the network game. The start game method is linked to the start game buttons on click event and it checks if a lobby has been created and if the player clicking on the button is the owner of the lobby. If so, then it calls the start hosting game method passing the created lobby as a parameter. Now we switch to the host game script. First read the scene metadata field from the lobby. To get the game scene's name we need to load. We store it locally in the scene name variable. 
Next, we need to add two listeners to the Fishnet Server Manager. On server connection state is used to load the game scene, and on client loaded start scenes is used to instantiate the player object once the game scene is fully loaded. Then we start the server by calling start connection. Now the lobby players, including the hosting player, need to be made aware that they can connect to the server. That is done by using the lobby set game server method and using the hosting player Steam ID as a parameter. It will send this ID to all lobby members through the lobby game server event in a Steam lobby script. In this event, we use the hosting player's Steam ID as the hosting address to start the connection to the server. It is that simple in Steamworks. You connect to a player using his or her Steam ID. So no worries about firewalls, network address translation and such. Now the server is being started and at some stage the on server connection state gets called. And when its state is started, we use the scene manager to load the scene on the server. We load it as a global scene so all clients will automatically open this scene when connecting to the server. The next step is the on client loaded start scenes, which will be called when a client has connected and loaded the game scene. We only want to run this code on the server, so we bail out of this call if it gets called by any of the clients. First, we check if the player prefab we created at the start of this episode has been assigned to the script. If so, then we use the findSpawns method to find all available spawning positions in the scene. We pick a spawning position and cache its position and rotation. Then we instantiate the player prefab through the network manager, set its position and rotation using the cached values and spawn it on the server manager. Finally, let's take a quick peek at the find spawns. It gets called after the scene has been loaded and will collect all objects in the scene tagged as spawn. It then stores their transforms to be used in the on client loaded start scenes method. I created this code after carefully examining the Fishnet networking player spawner and default scene scripts. And I recommend browsing through the various Fishnet scripts to learn its mechanics. At the moment, there are less examples and tutorial videos out there compared to Mirror, so some self study may be needed. But it's worth the effort. Okay, that will be all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'm off creating my next video.